Hey guys, here with Kirby. Hello. So yeah, this was um this was, so this match was just to like explore this matchup, like see how it went. Um and how how would you say it went from your perspective in terms of like did it did it play out how you kinda of thought it would, or were there parts you were surprised by or what? No, it went pretty much how I expected. I think that I was initially surprised, but then thought about it more and was like, oh, this is not that surprising about how you had more um, raiding groups than I did. Yeah. But I didn't really focus on that because that's sort of the thing is if you're focusing on, um, you know, corruptors out of your cap, then you're going to be using them for corruptors rather than for sending out raiding parties. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I was making once it's like, I, I can't, I don't know exactly what pa past what turn, maybe past turn 13. I wasn't even making mages out of my capital. So my research was fucking garbage. I was making two wind lords and four wind riders. So I just had a lot of wind lords. So if I wanted to, and I knew it was going to be like an easy raid or wanted to risk it, I could just put two wind riders on each wind lord. And that's like two raiding parties per cap turn, which is obviously a long shot from Ubar making Shaitan or whatever else it is from their cap and raiding with that. Yeah, and eventually I wound up, well, I, I mean, the turn the war started, I sent out raiding groups with Jin, but you can't do that same math for Jin because if you're attacking into Drain Dominion like you had, then they're a lot worse. So yeah. I can't like send one uh, Jin Emir and like two Jin warriors and expect it to win. Right. Right. And you can't have as many Jin Emir as I have Windlords if you're trying to make Shaitan. And right, exactly. And we had said too, like you need to make Shaitan because if if you're like I can throw off Arca without Shaitan because Shaitan are going to be a distraction, then like people's eyes would be like bloodshot red in chat as yeah, they watch this. The, yeah. That's not the showcase. The right. whole <laughs> idea is that Shaitans make the nation overpowered. Yeah. Um. You know what we should do maybe a little bit here? Maybe play like one or two more turns out as we... Because what we're going to do is do score graphs and stuff here at the end. But yeah, um, as we alchemize and get Eyes of God cast, um, I can move everybody off the cap except Windlords. And you have two Shaitan left. You can do... Because you were mentioning to me before we started recording, like, shit, I forgot to do turn one incinerate with gems. And he's got like a million fire gems. Um, I got some more. I got about... Five or six Shaitans. There's two of them in 37. There's one in 36 because they were corrupting around and stuff. Right. So I can just clear out all my commander chaff. You can fly him back and we can do some testing of it. Not testing, really, but we'll just see, okay, well, like, how bad is it if, um, you know, if he if the turn one incinerate was going out? I mean, I think with the commander chaff there and with the kind of attrition, like, you would still have some attrition, you know? Um it yeah, still and work out, uh, definitely but... with, like, if they have bodyguards, like you were yeah. saying, they are pretty much, like, always there for some reason. But um, that was, the yeah, that was pretty... Whenever there's bodyguards, I'm pretty much screwed. Yeah. I I'll, I will say, too, I found it, like, impossible to predict where you were going to move. I kept setting up traps. None of... I don't think you walked into a single trap. I kept being like, okay, well, he knows I'm threatening his cap, so he's going to go on this fort I have, right? Like specifically like this one. And, and you didn't, you were like, nope. Cause you had, you remember you had just, were you even thinking about that? You had just broken this fort when I had a few dudes on top. And yeah, well my, um, I mean, your, your dominion is drain and that group of guys right uh, there is mostly swarm casters and, um, and gin and like a handful of, uh, of the camel riders. So I don't think fighting into drain would have done that. Whereas I have magic two there. So uh, I guess I was sort of just hoping you would just pop back on there, but yeah. Yeah. Cause I had like 50 PD here and wind riders this last time. <laughs> like I'm going to catch him. You didn't go on top of any of my forts. And I kept, I don't, I think I kept all the forts adequately defended at all times. Cause that was like, you know, that's like one of the Ubar things, jump on a fort and steal the dudes. 
And I thought I had defended yeah, it, and you you never fucking walked into it. I like I hardly killed well, any of your raiders. It's like you were saying you didn't um, you didn't actually make any mages. Like I saw like one or two mages, but there was really no point to just sort of like snag one or two mages. So I was trying to uh, that's a good point. sort of counter raid with the shaitans to yeah. steal your wind lords and stuff like that, which I think I've gotten two so far. So yeah, I think you have, which. You know, don't don't tell the Windlords, but acceptable attrition. Um, okay, so, yeah, I think that kind of summarizes it. I mean, I think from my perspective, just the amount of raiding pressure Arco can produce is ridiculous. And Wind Riders plus PD, if I do manage, which I didn't this game at all, right? But if I did manage to catch you... When you were raiding me, and I had like five wind ra or wind riders and one wind lord plus like ten or fifteen PD, and you had fifteen gin, I think the gin gets slaughtered there, especially in drain. So, yeah, for sure. And one of the things I was trying to do was, um, at, as far as countering your raiding goes, was I knew you were going to raid me. I was maybe expecting you to sort of deep raid honestly like the turn that we started and i think you saw this yeah. i was expecting you to just drop on my cap with everything you had oh, dude. <laughs> that was calculated i i put everything in this fort so that because i knew you would do the math or something and figure out that even though it didn't look like i could get there wind lords are super fast so i actually could get to your cap from that fort like i could have moved my entire army there on your cap that turn and I put it there to scare you yeah, to make my, you think I would do it. Can, <laughs> yeah. All my shaitans can get to that fort from the cap, too. Yeah. So, like, I was expecting that. But what I did try and leverage a bit more of was that um, in the early phases of the war, when I started raiding, deep raiding into your lands, I had seeded all of your territory with shakes. And since they're tax collectors, I was just going as deep as I could and still getting the money from those provinces. So... I didn't even care. Did you have them stealthy? Was that kind of how that? Yeah, they were. They were everywhere. I mean, you can probably see them. They're like all over oh, your yeah. lands. No, but they don't need to be. Like, you just need one stealthy in this province, and it works. Is that kind of how it is? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of clever. Huh. I hadn't. I had. I had never done that when I played Ubar. That's a good idea, though. That's a clever idea. I like that. I, I thought they had to appear, and if they appear, it's a little dangerous, but if they just have to sit there stealthy, that's pretty... I normally think deep rating is a dumb idea, but in this case, it seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah, in this, like, very one situational case. Yeah. And shakes are kind of expensive, too. I think they're 50, 55 gold or something like that yeah. a piece, but you can get them in every province, right. so... Well, and with how it was working, where I was trying to put on so much rating pressure onto you... And with me having so many, so much, like so much land, that, and you, you having the kind of map move you did, like you didn't even have to go to an adjacent place. Like the math of me having to, of me actually catching you, is really small. You know, like, like if I were going to put up enough forces to catch your raiders, I would have had to have like basically shut down all of my raiding. Because. Yeah, yeah. Because this guy could go. And like meanwhile, here, I'm or still here, getting or here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you did that, like, meanwhile, I'd still be getting gold from all those provinces, and then you wouldn't be. But that was sort of the the same problem I had is I wasn't able to stop the counter rating, right. and so like I tried to set a couple traps, but yeah, you I got didn't some have of them. The resources. Yeah, I got a couple. I mean, you caught more of my raiders than I caught of yours. I don't think I caught any of your raiders ever. But I would just yeah, doing it. Eventually, all my raiders wound up getting pulled back too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. So let's. Um, I'm going to log out of this turn. Log into mine. How much research are you getting a turn? I'm 62. Let me see how much I'm getting. It's not great. I think I was up to about 300 at turn 20. Yeah. Um, let me see how much I have. Wait. No, I don't want an Ubar. Nope. I'll go ahead and um, alchemize everything except for like 50 fire okay. gems or so, so I can do turn one incinerates. Uh, Arcos, who we're and playing. Then send them to you to do Eyes of God. Well, I, it's, you know, I told you I turned off mage production. <laughs> Actually, I have the same research you did. 
Yeah, I did my research. You can see my screen, right? Or you could. Yeah. I'm construction three, almost four, and thumb two. That's it. That's pretty bad. Like Arca is like a research nation too, and it's really bad. Um, but I can let me. Yeah, let me start slamming mages, and I'll send you the alcohols. I have to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's gonna be faster if we just hit intern. To be completely honest. And uh, eyes of God is what? Five. Enchantment five. Yeah. All right. And let me move all my chaff out so you can start seeing how this happens. Let me pull your dudes back. Siege. We'll move these guys in too. I also expected you to take that farmland back south of your cap. That was another trap you never walked into. Felt a little bad, man. Uh... Do I have more? All right. I'm gonna hit. I hit intern. All right. Give me a second. It's kind of funny, I was going to play with Johnny Johnny yesterday, but I didn't want to give the concession we were going to be equal size. Because <laughs> I was like, the reason I picked Arco was because Arco can expand to like 50 provinces in year one. Well, I wonder how you were doing, because I was doing pretty all right. I was having like three, four province expansions a turn at some point, and I think we were sort of meeting up along the lines we had agreed upon. Yeah. Pretty similarly, you might have gotten like a handful more provinces than me but still yeah our um my cap circle was two heavy cav provinces with one of them had like 15 heavy cav i think the other had 25 a bone tribe and one easy province and i only had four cap circles so i was like yeah mine was mine was way easier than that um uh, all right wind riders report for duty All right, and in our capital. So I still got seven shaitans left that I can use next turn to do stuff with. All right. This guy's here holding attack. Holding attack, okay. And I've got like 20 wind lords coming. Okay. Uh, research humming along. I'm going to hit intern. Do you have an Astral 5 guy to cast it? Uh, shit. My god is. Do you have. Oh, you, you can do it. Maybe. Shit, maybe. I'm I mean, I got Astral 4. Okay. Uh, well, Construction 4, I can make, uh,. Construction for I can make a coin and then give it to you. All right. So let me pick that up real quick. You start going for uh, enchantment five or thumb five or whatever it is. Yeah, when I'm putting like all my shaitans to research, I'm actually at three twenty three research. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So go for enchantment five, and I'll make you a crystal coin. Send me like uh, twenty astral pearls, and that'll be good. Okay. Uh, let me make sure these guys are in guard commander here. So some of my guys don't have guard commander. I don't have enough, quite enough. You know, I've got more wind lords than I can tap out with. 
guard commander dudes. But it's all it's only Windriders now, so whenever you want to start assassinating. All right. I think I'll do next turn. All right. So it's been about 10 minutes, but for you it was a moment. And Kirby and I have it all set up. We have Eyes of God cast. We got a bunch of uh, corruption battles. And let's watch it. Uh, he's dead. Oh, wait. He made oh, it. Oh, yeah, it win. All right, we got one. Oh, he always gets yeah. the commander, too. Oh, I got him, yes. Two. Okay, good. Okay, got him too. Oh, so close, but I think I got the commander still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was this one, I think, right? Oh no, we have another one where it looks like it's some kind of mutual destruction. Alright, now that one was a win for us. So right now it's two, a tie, and one. And then you've corrupted two Windlords this turn too. Every single one of them has, a, and that was a mutually shared destruction. Yeah. But every single one of them had bodyguards on them. Yeah. I think I think Ill Winter has stealth buffed patrol like a bodyguards, because the it's either it has something to do that or the like mobile the combat speed or something. Because this is way higher than I remember them showing up. Like the bodyguards are actually doing pretty good work. Yeah. But so if we look at it, how many of your how many of the Shaitan are left? We're, we've only got two Shaitan left after that. Um, oh, but no, some come over here, too. So you had, in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, and you're down to four? Yeah. I mean, I would yeah. have had Commander Chaff in there, too, and then we were also getting to the point where I'd have the Dragon Helmet and stuff on important guys. But... I wonder, too, if you put the Dragon Helmet so they have more fire resistance, if they have bodyguards, if the Incinerate would preferentially target the bodyguards. Well, I'd just um, probably do um, a Lightning Bolt at that point instead, switch the script up. Yeah. The other thing that I usually do, because this is also essentially equivalent to 100% uh, uh, precision, is Orb Lightning. Yeah. Especially since you have literally zero shock resistance for your bless, that would just um, hit yeah. you guys. I don't think it would necessarily kill your guys. That was but... actually a mistake. I, I was just testing this yesterday just to make sure I could expand with it. And I forgot, I, I showed this actually to Arco because this is really similar to the build Arco runs in multiplayer games. And he's like, dude, why don't you have shock resistance in there? I was like, oh shit. I have, because my bless is like six air. So clearly I should do shock resistance 10 and swiftness 1, but I did swiftness 2, which was a mistake. I was like cursing about that in the video. But anyway. You're right, the lightning would have been painful. Um Yeah, I think if I'd gone a couple more turns, I probably would have been able to um also get well, I don't know. It, it, I'm, you would want to aim for Construction 6 next. Well, not next, but because a lot of the stuff that you can make Shaitans overpowered with is in Construction 6. But as you can kind of see, like naked Shaitans are not really going to be able to tank the uh, Bless. They're not intended to be combat assassins. They're intended yeah. to be mate assassins. But then you have to start thinking, like, Ubar is going to have, like, Rings of Warning and... You know, now 10 bodyguards, right? And full gear on important wind lords. I think with Arco specifically, it's tough because they have their, their have the sacred flying guys. Yeah. If it were like Pangea, I could put, put up a fire elemental in the way to yeah. sort of tank for yep. a bit and then incinerate the rest of it. Yeah. And my guys have really good morale too. So they really don't fail a ton of seduction attempts. And then if I get the fire hats on them, then they definitely don't fail. So it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. But let's look at score graphs. 
Oh man, we were basically mirrors of each other in expansion. Which means you expanded really well, because Arca is probably the best expanding nation. I had I was slower than I would have been. Because I would have been well, like I, rushing the shit out of you if Yeah, we didn't I have picked up the um I picked up the Mercs, the um Oh uh, the war ship breakers. Yeah. Yeah, so that really helped out a lot. But there were very fit, few failed expansions for me. Oh, and you were bigger than me too. I saw yeah, your I, guess we, I saw your Ichthid one that was captured on on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that was twice. I failed that one twice. I know. And so I was like, "What the heck, man?" I cast uh, I cast the shame spell at you, but but well, dude, was I was smaller only... than you. How about that? Yeah, I don't know. We must have divvied it up wrong a yeah. little bit, but oh well. Income, you were ahead in that too. Yeah, I was basically pure scales, but not really high dominion. So Kirby, the premise of this, and this wasn't even a discussion you and I were having. This is a discussion I was having with other people in Discord. And this is not like any way a definitive proof, right? This is just one data point. We were saying, do you need to rush Ubar? Because if you don't, then they're going to get completely out of control and nobody can 1v1 them. Um, how do you feel about that after this game? Um, I've played a lot of Ubar games and um, several of them have gotten pretty late game. I'm not sure, and, I, and obviously you played Ubar that one time against me as Pangea at the... Yeah like in the end and we burned the whole, whole world down. We did. Um, I don't know, like, because the thing with Ubar's Shaitans is that they are hard to replace if they ever get lost in yep. addition to um, not being able to get a lot of them. Um, and then they do compete with so many other different options in your recruitment pool as well. Um, it's sort of like if you I, I've been learning over time the different things that shaitans can and can't take and what you have to give them in order to be able to take things. And it's funny because the first game I ever played with Ubar, like right when they came out, was that um, Atlas map that you had oh, um, yeah. where you were playing uh, Blanca. Oh, oh and, dude, uh, you were Coconut Ubar in that? Playing. I was Ubar in that, oh, yeah. I forgot you were Ubar in that Coconut one. was... Yeah the alchemist rooster in that one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but I actually went up against Arco. I forget who was playing. I think Isataris was playing it, uh, Arco. Oh, no way. I and didn't know that so, was Isataris. God, I need to go back and look. That was, I didn't really know Isataris then. He just joined that game. I like know Isataris <laughs> pretty well now, but I think it, when, in that game, it must've just seemed like a random person to me. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we went like hardcore dueling Isataris and I against that like, for most of the early game mm -hmm. where it was just him and me one-on-one -on -one, and through this like narrow choke point on the far west of the map. Yep. And over time I just sort of ground him toward his cap and took, took his land. But um, that was sort of the test game where I learned like at, at the start, what Shaitans were able and not able to do. So like this whole back and forth where it's like you have the wind Lord bless. Cause he had very similar bless to this. Mm. And then he would make like, the fire hats and then mm -hmm. i would like cast lightning bolt instead and <laughs> stuff like that you you play that dual back and forth game where you're like corrupting but every time like i failed i lost a shaitan and right. so you don't have that many left at the end of the game after that right so i if don't know you, it's if you hard don't find to a real soft target you take a lot of shaitan attrition potentially and a lot yeah, of times it's sure. weird things you wouldn't expect like jade amazons are going to hit you with frozen heart and you're like fuck Right, yeah. I mean, Frozen Heart honestly makes me want to like add um, like a uh, uh, frost resistance uh, item to right. every Shaitan kit because then it's just like a like a Wild West first to the draw kind of thing. Incinerate versus Frozen Heart, who mm -hmm. wins? Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's it's. I mean, there, Ubar is very, very strong in certain ways and very easily countered in other ways, too. Yeah. Um, and not everyone can do it. Like, uh, a lot of the uh, stealthy and glamour nations uh, can 
go toe to toe with Ubar because you can sneak away when you're expecting to get yep. like um, assassinated, corrupted. corrupted. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and like Niflheim, for example, or Yomi, like you're just like I don't even know how to kill those things <laughs> like yet. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, you need like but, lifelong protections, protections and shit, and then it's yeah, like, you need, and then you it's need like, like, how many of those shaten are you gonna realistically field? I mean, there was one test game where I was playing where I was like, oh, let's see if I can kill like a a regen bless with a full kitted uh, Nifel Jarl and stuff like that, and I was giving them like. Um, air boosters and casting like phantasmal army <laughs> and giving like in in as mage assassination battles and i was like turn timering the assassination battle with all the chaff that's on the field and i still couldn't kill them because then i would retreat first because i was the attacker so right. yeah it was just crazy but yeah. i don't know this um they're not necessarily an i win button um, but at the same time, if you just sort of let them grow big and don't deal with them, like even if it's just like, I'm going to nip you in the heels here and then like somebody else is going to attack you here. The thing with Ubar is you always have to like, unless you can like nap three every single one of your neighbors and have a pretty decent, sizable, solid chunk of land and then build up your blood economy and bl build up your research and all that kind of stuff. Um but then that's the same with like every nation. It's yeah. just a smally game, I guess, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I think in this particular matchup too, I don't know when the time is that like, because we were like, okay, turn 20, let's go. You know, if we had waited a few more turns, you would have had incinerate, but then I would have had, you know, fire protection gear and more chaff commanders and, 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 you know, so like, I don't know... Yeah when the if ever it becomes a good matchup i mean clearly you you know you were talking about that game where you beat arco in it with a competent player at the helm so you know i'm sure it can be done um but i don't know when this ever really becomes a real good matchup for for ubar i, I think it's an arco favored matchup i mean if we if arco could expand like they wanted to i think it would it would have been over by turn 20 um you know cuz arco you know it's the 50 province expansion and then every time you bump you know, Arco is probably going to win unless you're doing really yeah. conservative Yeah, And that's parties. sort of the thing is you have to be very conscious of your, of how you're going to survive your early game as Ubar, because everyone else can take these ridiculous blesses that uh, ridiculous blesses that specifically counter your Jin warriors. And so I made like a crap ton of ghouls. And I, since I had all five, I was just going to do iron warriors on all of them. And that, didn't really grind through you when you were on my cap. Uh, so yeah. the other thing that people typically do is like flaming arrow spam with a bunch of their archers, or right. you could try the McCone strategy where you just crap out a bunch of the, uh, the slave troops and stuff like that. But I don't think any of that. They'll, and then of yeah, course, none of that's good against well, wind riders really. Yeah. The only, the only counter really is the dormant Titan that you have to get pretty much, which I didn't do because I went just full scales, but um, yeah, you would have had yeah. a lot harder time expanding with the dormant Titan, but I think you could argue in this matchup, the Titan would have been better because you would, have, expansion wasn't going to be a thing, right? You were kind of guaranteed a certain amount. Right. But then again, one Titan is not going to be able to bop like, you know, all of the raiding parties that Arco can chew out and stuff yeah. like that. So. And even then, I had great swords of sharpness on like half of my wind riders, too. So, yep, yep. They were going to they were going to bop a Titan. Um, well, cool. Um, what are you? So my, my closing thoughts are that I think Ubar can be dealt with if you if it's if you, you know, there's kind of a weird thing with Ubar. If you do. If Ubar's in your game, you kind of need to get a pretty large percentage of the following. Spirit Sight, Magic Weapons, Fire Shock Resistance, right? You don't necessarily have to have all of those, but you kind of yeah. need most of them. Um, yeah, you could probably drop Spirit Sight, I think. Um, yeah. Magic Weapons can deal with pretty much most of the the hard parts with Ubar's Sacreds. Or, I sorry, with Jin Warriors. Yeah. Um, if you, uh, if you don't, if you don't get those things, 
especially if a lot of the people in the game don't get those things, then Ubar can just go crazy, right? Because they really are hard to deal with if you don't have them, most of those. Yeah. The other thing that can really um, sort of uh, make your make your own lands very unsavory for Ubar is if you take drain scales, but not everyone wants to take drain scales. But right. that sort of the thing is like, I didn't want to go into your lands when you have drain scales. So. Yeah. And I did a pretty good good job preaching before the war started to make sure it right. got everywhere. Um, so, yeah, so people can, um, you know, if you if you don't get the Ubar Bless, you're basically kind of food for them. If you do get it, though, I think there's a lot of nations which can just fight Ubar, like a normal 1v1, and just, like, you have to do the things to counter Shaitan. But if you do them, it's not, like, that bad. I don't know. That's my opinion. Yeah, you can make it work. I think that there are very specific um, things that Shaitans struggle to deal with, and uh, a lot of them are things like if you're if you're Yomi or uh, Niflheim or something like that. Um, and then if you're not, then if you're an elf nation, then you can sneak away. And if you're not any of those, then just spam out a crap ton of extra commanders. Yeah. And maybe spam out a crap ton of commanders anyway, too, because it, um, you know, yep. it it means it's going to be harder if they put like a bajillion gems of gear on their dudes. It's like, oh, great. You stole a commander. You killed a commander. OK, with your 30 gem dude. Yeah, like, great. Yeah, the other big thing, of course, is, yeah, the other big thing, of course, is um, attack first. <laughs> don't right. don't let Ubar get the drop on you. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for doing this with me, Kirby. Yep. Good practice. Good fun. Thanks. Yep. All right. Thank you guys for watching.